Deciding where and when to light a planned fire in endangered species habitat is tricky. There's always a possibility that one bad fire could cause species extinction. However, for a species like Bartram scrub hair streak butterfly that depends on frequent fires to maintain their habitat, we know that not lighting fires guarantees their extinction. The ideal is finding the Goldilocks scenario, burning not too much and not too little, but just the right amount. Bartram scrub hair streaks are endangered butterflies about the size of the thumbnail. Their caterpillars eat just one plant, pineland croton. These plants and butterflies only exist in pine rockland forests in South Florida. Pine ranklands evolved with frequent fire, both lightning and human cause, that kept the forest open. There are dozens of endangered plants and animals in these forests that are adapted to and depend on these frequent fires. Now, these species only survive in places where land managers light prescribed fires. As South Florida developed, pine ranklands were chopped up into tiny fragments that are now adjacent to neighborhoods and strip malls where it's extra tricky to plan and light fires. This means butterflies are only left in the largest fragments that get burned regularly. To figure out how to best light these fires to promote Bartram scrub hair streak persistence, we are learning how butterfly populations recover over time after a fire. To do this, we need to know if the population is growing or shrinking over time. This means counting how many eggs females butterflies lay, observing how many of those eggs hatch and become caterpillars, and then how many of those caterpillars survive to become adults. And we need to do this in fire units that have burned at different times. And this is really painstaking work. We have to search plants for eggs and caterpillars. And then when we find one, we flag the plant and check on it daily. You have to kind of develop a search image for caterpillars and their feeding on the plant. They start out really small and they feed on the flower buds, leaving these little bubbles of red sap as evidence of their feeding. Then as they get bigger, they start to roam more around the plant, they hide under leaves, sometimes even on the ground, and we monitor their growth and survival daily until they get to be huge, which for these butterflies or caterpillars is about 15 millimeters or about the size of a gummy bear. At that point, we build enclosures around the plants that they're on so that we can know whether or not the caterpillar survives to become a butterfly. And once we build these enclosures, they have to be checked every single day so that when the butterfly does emerge, we can release it on that day. Yeah, see, it'll just sit there. Oh. When we combine this information that we have on butterflies with data we have on how pineland croton plants respond to fires, we can figure out the best timing to burn pine rockland forests to maintain healthy butterfly populations. The key is to not burn too quickly before butterflies have a chance to recover and to not wait too long so that the plants are overgrown by other species. We are looking for that sweet spot in the middle. I've been working on Bartram scrub hair streak conservation for a decade. On Big Pine Key, I watched a lack of fire cause the butterflies to decline until there were too few left to survive the direct strike of Hurricane Irma. The research that we are doing now in Everglades National Park will help land managers make decisions about how and where and when to burn so that we don't repeat what happened on Big Pine Key and so that we're giving Bartram scrub hair streaks the best chance to survive into the future. They're such cute little butterflies.